in this hearing. Thank you all for agreeing to be here. It's important. This is a, it's actually a tricky and difficult topic um, because I think there are two kinds of things we're trying to address. The, the first is um, generated disinformation. And that's, I think you're going to describe some of that, those efforts today, but that is some foreign adversary, Iran, China, Russia, they create or make something up and then they amplify it. They basically make it up, they push it out there and, and they hope people believe it. It's actually something, I remember giving a speech back in 2018 or 2019 warning about AI generated uh, videos that were gonna be the wave of the future um, and in terms of trying to influence uh, what people think and see and we've seen some of that already uh, play out. That's pretty straightforward. Let me tell you where it gets complicated. Where it gets complicated is there is a pre-existing view that people have in American politics. I use this as an example, not because I generally agree with it, but because I think it's an important example. There are people in the United States who believe that perhaps we shouldn't have gotten involved with Ukraine or shouldn't have gotten involved in the conflict in Europe. Vladimir Putin also happens to believe and hope that that's what we will conclude. And so now there's someone out there saying something that, whether you agree with them or not, is a legitimate political view that's pre-existing. And now some Russian bot decides to amplify the views of an American citizen who happens to hold that, th those views. And the question becomes, is that disinformation, or is that misinformation, is that an influence operation because an existing view is being amplified? Now, it's easy to say, well, just take down the amplifiers. But the problem is it stigmatizes the person whose view it is. Now the accusation is that that person isn't simply holding a view, they're holding the same view that Vladimir Putin happens to have on that one topic, or something similar to what he has, and as a result, um, they themselves must be an asset. And that's problematic and it's complicated. And, and, and as we try to manage all this, we recall that in 2020, uh, this is now well known, obviously it's been well discussed, there was a laptop, the Hunter Biden's laptop, there was a story in the New York Post and 51 former, and I say former because I have people coming out all the time saying intelligence officers, these are former intelligence officials, went out and said this has all of the attributes of a Russian disinformation campaign and as a result, the New York Post, who posted the original story, had their story censored and taken down, their account locked. There was a concerted effort on the basis of that letter to silence a media outlet in the United States on something that actually turned out not to be a Russian disinformation. Even though I imagine maybe the Russians wanted to spread that story. They might have amplified it, but it also happened to be factual. We know, based on the letter from the CEO of Meta, that the government pressured him during the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, to censor certain views, and he expressed regret about agreeing to some of that. And so there are people in this country that have their accounts locked or even got, uh, uh, in some cases, uh, canceled out because they question the efficacy of masks, something we now know Dr. Fauci uh, agreed masks were not a solution to all the problems, uh, that questioned the, uh, whether there was a, a lab, the lab leak, or put out the lab leak theory that at one time was co considered a conspiracy and a flat out lie, and now our own intelligence agencies are saying it's. 50% likely, just as likely as the natural occurring. So this is a tricky minefield. And it's even trickier now because, you know, Russia's still doing it more than anybody else. But the others, you don't need to have a big, expensive operation to pursue some of this. I think we should anticipate that in the years to come, and it's happening already, the Iranians are going to get into this. They already are. The Chinese are going to get into this business. They already are. And you see them using that in other countries to sow discord and division. It's coming. It's also North Korea, multiple, uh, and maybe even friendly states who have a preference on how American public opinion turns. So I do think it's important to understand what our policies are today in terms of identifying what is disinformation, what is actually generated by a foreign adversary versus the amplification of a pre-existing belief in America, which has left a lot of people in a position of being labeled collaborators and when in fact they just hold views that on that one issue happen to align with what some other country hopes we believe as well. And, and uh, I'm, I'm very interested to learn what our internal policies are in, our com in these companies, uh, because um, I, th I think it's a, it's, a, it's a minefield that we need to, we may end up sowing in, in an effort to prevent discord. I don't want to sow discord. And that's one of the dangers that we're now uh, flirting with. So thank you for being here. I look forward to hearing your testimony. And before I go, I just want to